baseball art, as they call it. The kind that is well played is as beautiful as a dance. A ballet that is popular and yet also refined. The football dance room translates this expression in the form of videos and images with characters, their plays, and snippets from the history of Brazilian women in football. And it's worth thinking, who are our pioneers? As players, referees, coaches, journalists, commentators or fans, they must be remembered. Linda Cavalheiro, for example, she made headlines at a game in 1923 against Sport Clube Celeste. Linda was on the field, not as a player, but rather as a referee. It is one of the first records we have of a woman blowing the whistle in a football game in Brazil. Brazilian Lea Campos, on the other hand, was invited to be the referee in the Women's Mundialito Championship. She had to ask for consent from President General Medici in the midst of the military regime. I was invited by Mexico to represent Brazil, since Brazil did not have women's football representation, so I could represent Brazil as a referee. That was in 1971, a year after the men's third World Cup title. Leia was arrested 15 times and fought against her own family to be able to work in football. In fact, a female refereeing board was only established by FIFA in 1995. Claudia de Vasconcelos Guedes was part of it. She paved the way for others, such as Silvia Regina and Regildenia Moura. Edina Alves Batista and Neuza Beck and the Argentine Mariana Almeida recently formed the first female refereeing trio to arbitrate at a male game in a FIFA competition. They led the race for fifth place in the 2020 Club World Cup. Quite an achievement. Apita Edna Alves Batista. Começa o Sanda Coreia do Sul e All do Rail do Qatar. Rose, from the state of Pará, is another name we cannot forget to mention. In the 1980s, she founded and chaired the Rio de Janeiro Women's Football Association and encouraged women from other states to do the same. Rose was responsible for including football in the feminist program of the first National Festival of Women in the Arts in 1982. The festival ended with a match between women's teams from Rio de Janeiro and São Paulo at the Morumbi Stadium. As women's football was not yet regulated, the São Paulo Federation did what it could to prevent the game from happening. They were forced to change the rules of the game so as not to lose the battle. They removed the referee and reduced the time of the match. They justified it as a spectacle, a performance, so that they could still play in front of the 68,000 people who were at the stadium. We also have to talk about Juma Menges from Camassari in the state of Bahia. In the 1980s, she used to play indoor soccer, seven-a-side football, and even field football. An injury caused Juma to stop, but she carried on as a coach. She helped reveal several female athletes and even unprecedentedly coached men's teams. Then came Emily Lima. She was the first female coach of the Brazilian women's national team and stood out for demanding the professionalization of the sport. The changes that Emily promoted were unpleasant to many. She was fired within 10 months of her work without having played an official game. 24 players wrote a letter to CBF, the Brazilian Football Confederation, asking her to continue, but to no avail. The good thing is that all that noise had its effect and reverberation. Nowadays, the sport is being treated with far more respect. The arrival of former player Aline Pellegrino at CBF was a milestone. She was invited to be the coordinator of women's competitions in the most important entity in Brazilian football. With her, another former player, Duda Luizelli, arrived to be the coordinator of the women's teams. When Aline and Duda were hired, CBF made a massively important announcement. The women players were to start receive equal pay to the men when playing for the official Brazilian team. A lot has changed and there is still a lot more change that needs to happen. That is why we have to continue to work for more equality, both on and off the field. Strategy, fight, teamwork, and as we will see in the next episode, a lot of body game. <laughs>